Hey, what's up team? Eddie Gray. We are back at it again and today we are covering binaural panning as you may have remembered from yesterday's session. We learned that binaural recording is best suited for headphones. We want to make sure that when we use this process that we use some signal conditioning that ensures the signals are accurately reproduced. We're going to talk about binaural panning in detail. So let's get right into it. Let's go. What's up, guys? Happy Tuesday. You guys know how we do it here. Resources for the modern creative. Consistency, determination, discipline. Get ready. I'm feeling good, feeling grateful. Let's stay up. Let's bring each other up. Let's go. All right. It's a brand new day. We're going to be covering binaural panning. There's a lot of misinformation about this very subject. So you're going to want to stay tuned. All right. So let's cover binaural panning in logic. But before we do, we've made it a tradition here. Every single time something comes up on the channel, we're not exactly sure how to put all the pieces together. Uh, because the user guide at times can, um, let's just call it be a little bit more descriptive, right? And so what we're going to do right now is go into a logic session because we looked at a very interesting feature in passing. And uh, I'll go ahead and pull it up here. Okay, so if I go to markup, I'm not sure if you guys even knew that you could insert uh, images, screenshots inside of your project notes. But uh, we came across this piece of information. Adjusting the volume of a VCA channel strip changes the volume of each individual channel. So that makes sense when we're utilizing a VCA channel. It quite literally serves to bring down the volume of every single individual track. This can be important when mixing. Why? If you use post fader sends effects, Right there's 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 three ways to send these effects. The amount of signal sent to an effect by a channel assigned to a VCA follows the VCA group volume changes. So what does this mean? Because for some of us, that can sound fairly esoteric. And if you do not know how to read hieroglyphics, then I'm here to assist you in that process. So what they're saying here is that with this group, right? Track one, track two track three. I am sending these tracks over to bus one, right? I'm applying some parallel compression, nothing too fancy using an FET compressor. I'll hit command W to close that. And uh, let me open up some other programs here. Sweet. All right. You may or may not have noticed the bottom of the screen here that I have grouped these as a VCA aka a folder stack i know it looks a little bit different but it's the same thing and so these are literally all being routed to this vca fader so what ends up happening is that within the signal routing i can control this entire group or pairings of groups if you will with this one vca fader and to sum this up when you do either increase or decrease the volume, what ends up happening is that this volume is determining the volume going into the faders and also going into the sends. So when these sends, one, two, and three, are being routed to this aux track, which is my parallel compression auxiliary track, it is influencing how much of that processing is going into that channel. And so I just want to be clear about that because if you are attempting to intensify a mix, well, this could be a great feature. 
And yet, if you're looking to perhaps uh, you know make the mix a bit more chill, then this isn't going to work for you, right? This is this is contrary to what you're trying to accomplish. And so, if that's the case, then there's there's other processes that you can use. But let's be clear: when I bring the VCA fader down, everything will go down. Check it out. Let's bring this uh, master fader down. Okay, so you've noticed the volume of the channel strips and the aux has gone down. This is because these buses are currently on post fader. If I were to bring them up, my current volume here on the aux track is 2.7, right? That's what's being fed into the channel strip. And you'll notice that it goes up or down depending on if I increase or decrease the level of the VCA. So we can now see clearly that this is influencing the way that the bus is hitting the aux track, right? These sands are hitting the aux track. So what we're going to do here is choose pre-fader. And then now, regardless of what decisions are made on this particular VCA channel, it does not necessarily affect the performance of the aux track. This is important to know if you're a serious mixer or you're an aspiring mixer and you need to know all the tricks of the trade. <laughs> Something I encourage you not ever to do is to touch this master fader, but because we're on Zoom here, I'm just making sure that our ears don't blow up, okay? All right, so let me go ahead and show you the VCA treatment in pre-fader now. So interestingly enough, the volume of tracks one, two, and three been completely eradicated, but because we're sending in pre-fader, the aux track has not been affected at all. And so if you ever use VCA processing and you do not want to affect the relationship between your bus, sends, and aux tracks, then you might want to do that in pre-fader. Okay. If you want to intensify the process, then of course you could then go to post fader. Awesome. All right. Cool. Let me uh, let me check you guys out. Hold on. Boom. All right, guys. Hope you're well. Eddie Gray, reading the Logic User Guide. You know that this whole thing is brought to you by the incredible team, my team that I love and respect so much. Uh, we're doing so much to help the modern creative. This is really, you know, uh, about purpose. It's really about a mission. You don't get up every single day, no matter if you feel like it or not, no matter if you're, you know, all of the above. I don't even want to throw out any uh, terminology here, but you do it because you love it and you do it because there is a purpose. And when you have that purpose, then you can fight longer than you think you can. You can do more than you think you can. And so this is what I want for you. Whatever your purpose is, you want to be the next big star. You want to... Uh, help people heal, you want to help individuals dance and, 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 and be free with their bodies, you want to open up the minds of the next generation, then it's up to you to believe in that and to harvest it and to take care of that dream, right? Because no one else is responsible for it. So anyhow, we're going to get right into the session. We're talking about binaural panning. Let me bring you guys in. Let's go. Beast mode. All right, cool. So we need to look at the logic user guide. We're talking about binaural panning. By setting the channel strips panning mode to binaural, okay, the channel strips panning mode to binaural, you can use the binaural pan knob. So before last session, we know that we can set the output to surround, and that does something, but we can also set the pan knob to binaural. The signal that results from using the binaural pan is best suited for headphone playback. Okay, so remember, I'm always talking to you about what you need to highlight and focus, right? I'd never claim to know the entire program. There are still parts that need to be developed, and I say that's the case for anybody and everybody, but here's the deal. 
you want to learn the fundamental aspects of any feature. So here, the user guide is telling us that if you're going to use this, it's best suited for headphone playback. You can, however, process the binaural output using the binaural post processing plugin, which allows you to play back the binaural pan effect through loudspeakers. Okay, so here we go. This is the game changer. There's so much information, there's so much misinformation about this, guys. I can't even tell you how many times I've heard people uh, say that they're using this and it sounds cool, uh, but they're not using it in conjunction with the binaural post processing plugin which allows you to play back this effect through loud speakers, meaning not your headphones, meaning not surround sound. So this is also very important. If you're going to use it, and if you're going to claim to know how to use it, then please run the protocol. Make sure you do it the way it needs to be done. So how do we find binaural panning? Well, if you look at track number nine for me, I'm going to open up the Mixer X. All right. And if I control click, that is, on the pan knob, we have three options available. We've talked about stereo pan extensively during this series, which if you've been watching, I know you love it. I know you're subbing. I know you're sharing. And, of course, we have balance panning, which is basically 2D. It's, uh, it's not as four-dimensional as stereo pan and then binaural panning when used correctly can be 5d and beyond okay so when i hit binaural panning we get this magical icon as you can see there and there so let me go ahead and set this back to the default and then i will double click on here and all of a sudden we see a pretty impressive Plugin. I mean, look at the GUI here. This is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So let's learn about this binaural surround pattern different than setting your, uh, let me select the guitar, output surround, right? It's a different procedure, uh, but you can get the same result, okay? All right, so then let's go output, stereo out for that guy. All right. You can control the panning effect directly on the channel strip by using the binaural pan knob to position the panning pucks, right, official term, on the panning plane. You can also access the binaural panning pucks and even more binaural panning parameters in the binaural window. These are the window's main element. Okay, so here we have the puck, which is the little circle that we see here. All right, the panning plane, right, the space in which you're panning. It looks like we can change modes that allows us to uh, interpret the sound. So we have uh, different ways of looking at that. I wonder why I'm not looking at the same thing. Oh, hmm, separation. Something looks different on this one. I think, hold on, let me go output, surround. Is this different? No. Hmm. Something is different on mine for some reason. Let me see. No, this is a different plugin, it looks like. Let me get clear on why this is happening. Surround. Oh, that one looks the same as well. So this looks like a plugin called Surround Panner, and I'm looking for binaural pan. So Hold on, did we cover setting the channel strips panning mode to binaural? That's what I did. Oh, no. I see what's going on. Okay. So when you set up surround, you get this surround panner. Okay, so this is what we did yesterday when we were setting the output as surround. Okay. But if I go back to stereo, as I'm doing now, stereo output. Okay. So then now everything is back to normal. I'm going to control click fairy phrases, which will, is going to work really well with this kind of material. I go to binaural pan and then I double click this and now we can access the binaural pan. So that's kind of confusing there, right? I'm not sure if they made that clear here, but uh, essentially we can access, oh right, the surround position and then binaural panning. So two different things 
really good um, that we caught that. And uh, let's keep going here. So we were talking about the modes, right? So we have spherical, right? Which is obviously going to sound a bit more like uh, everything is moving around your your head if you're wearing headphones. And then we have planar, which I believe is a little bit more uh, 2D. Uh, not as complicated, but here, let's see. So angle, elevation, distance, we can control all of these things as soon as we're moving the puck position. And all of these can be found here. I'm sure that we can also uh, influence this. No, we can't. I was trying to insert a numerical value, but it's all happening with the uh, the pucks here. So you can control, looks like, the right side independently from the left, the left independently from the right, and then this center puck controls uh, how you maneuver uh, the center. Spread. Um, these are also uh, features that are represented here. But here you can actually insert a numerical value. So let me uh, sh shoot for 40. You can see that's a lot more narrow. Okay. Um, panning plane. Good. Mode pop-up menu. So the virtual shape of the panning plane, which can be planar or spherical. Mode image represents the resulting position of the audio signal. So that would be the entire image. What else do we have here? Vertical offset. Information field that... Only present when the planar mode is selected. They adjust automatically when changes are made to the so vertical offset and tilt. So all this stuff here is influencing um, what we're seeing on the screen, right? So you can actually set how you want this image to uh, to to be positioned. So here I'm moving, and to be clear, I'm moving this image, not the one up here. So this is some pretty detailed stuff. Size and field determines the size expressed as the radius of the circular plane. So if we look at the circular plane, but not, uh, I currently have this tilted. Let me see if I could straighten this out again. It's probably a lost cause at this point. Let me see, planar, uh, vertical offset. Nope, tilt amount. Aha, there we go. All right, good. And I can increase, looks like the size. Uh, it's not happening visually, but I think that's kind of the point. And then the Doppler. What is Doppler? Extended parameters. So it looks like if you hit this disclosure triangle, you can access some more parameters. Diffuse field compensation. The Doppler button is going to turn on and off the Doppler effect. What is this? A change in the pitch of a signal perceived by a person who is moving relative to the source signal. That's really cool, right? So I assume like... Let's think of a jet flying by or a car driving by. And as it's going, the pitch is going down because the distance is also affecting the signal. You can make basic adjustments to the binaural pan field using the channel strip binaural knob. Okay, so now this is when we get into it. So we have the binaural pan and then this other kind of uh, concept as well. Drag the center puck. Um, oh, right. So we can also make decisions here, which are just reflected, uh, you know, on the screen. So there's nothing. Uh, in fact, it seems a little bit more limited because I can't control the spread, but you can control that um, in the GUI. Uh, option click to reset the center puck and spread to 90. Let me see if that's true. Option click. Okay, cool. Yeah, it certainly is. Drag the spread in the panning field to adjust the pan position. To adjust the position. Drag the spread in the panning field. I'm not sure exactly what they mean by that. Um, it doesn't look like I can affect the actual spread on the channel strip, but you can certainly do it right there. Okay. Um, so let's listen to this before we move on. Uh, let me go ahead and solo these regions here. Uh, not those, but those. And let's take a listen. Here we go. Yeah. 
Yeah, that Doppler made this really, really intense. Such a cool feature. I think I like spherical a little bit more. It was really easy to, to hear the effect. Um, very cool. Uh, you're, you're probably not going to hear that over the, um, the live, but do me a favor. Go check it out in your DAW and then come back. All right. So we now know how to work this, right? We're basically moving a puck between different access points and um, we can select different modes. Planar, spherical, right? Uh, if you're set to spherical, the results are placed on a virtual sphere. If it helps, imagine the sphere as a virtual head. When the direction puck is placed at the top half of the circular plane, the sound is in front of the listener. Okay, so, right, it's like the sound can be coming from besides you or behind you, so that would be the benefit of, of doing this. Great, obviously, for, for mixing... Um, you know, movies, things of that nature. Um, again, the Doppler effect is going to kind of make it feel as if things are a little bit more detailed uh, in terms of positioning. And then there's something called diffuse field composition, uh, compensation, which is on by default. Okay, ensures that a neutral sound uh, is created for headphone playback utilizing this feature. When using multiple binaural panners, turn this option off Okay, so there you go. So more information if this is something you want to get into. This is not uh, part of my bag, but I want to make sure you have what you need. The binaural post-processing plugin allows you to apply diffuse field compensation to all binaural panners outputs at once, saving CP. Okay, cool. So there's, there, there's another way to do this. If you're going to do this with one track, fantastic. It's not a big deal. But if you're going to use more than one, then you're going to have to utilize the binaural panner. All right, this is the post-processing plugin that we've been talking about. Now, if you're in planar mode, drag the mode image to control the vertical offset and tilt the circular plane. Okay, I want to get into this plugin. Page 592, Eddie Gray reading the Logic User Guide. The binaural post-processing plugin is available in aux and output channel strips only. This plugin allows you to apply various compensation modes on a stereo bus or output, because remember, we can route all these as well doesn't have to be just to the output, through which several or all binaural signals are routed. This saves what? CPU power and makes it easy to switch between compensation modes. So again, binaural post-processing. I'm going to insert this on my stereo out and let's see what it looks like. I wouldn't even know where it is within the framework. I, I would imagine somewhere in what utility? Nope. Uh, imaging? There you go. Okay, so there are different compensation modes optimized for front, horizontal, average over, which is kind of the default, and then cross talk cancellation. So, this, based on what we've read, is going to sound and feel different, and it will work better if you're planning on uh, utilizing this with loudspeakers. And let me just corroborate that because I don't want to give any misinformation uh, if, if I can. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna record it. Nope, it was up here somewhere. Uh, nope, it was up here. Perceive. Nope, it's coming. It's coming. Yeah, right here. You can, however, use the binaural post-processing plugin either on an aux or a stereo output, which allows you to play back the binaural pan effect through loudspeakers. So this is the only way that we can justify this decision. If you ever want to do it, then you have to utilize that in this way. Either route everything to an individual aux track or just send everything over to the one two stereo output and use binaural post processing. I'll take one more go at it and then we will call it. <laughs> Can you try it without? I'm just curious. Oh, yeah. It doesn't even compare, guys. The detail is absolutely incredible. All right, my good friends. Um, something I do want to mention before we get out of here. Here, let me just look at you guys. How's it going? 
All right, so basically this next feature gets into MIDI channel strips. Now, we've had um, a lot of issues with just MIDI in general because number one, this is an, an older technology and I don't, I don't even have any like, you know, modular synths or anything like that. So some of the things get lost in translation. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm gonna take on uh, when this is all said and done is to cover some of the aspects of the program that we that we couldn't look at thoroughly simply just because of some um, hardware restrictions. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a picture of this um, because the only way you can use these MIDI channel strips is uh, is basically as um, surrogates for remote controls so that you can control, uh, you know, say like a drum synth or something like that. And again, I don't have anything like that. So we will not be covering this. Um, this is why we've had issues understanding like program changes and things like that. Um, I wouldn't say that this is a dying uh, tech. I would just say that it's just not prominent. It's not used, especially when it comes to modern creatives, people that have picked this up in the last couple of years, and they're looking to uh, utilize the in the box workflow or perhaps have one or two pieces of external hardware. Uh, but yeah, I just want to make sure you understand that we're moving past page uh, 594. And the next time that I see you guys, we're going to be customizing the mixer within Logic Pro. I wanted to thank you for the opportunity and the time. All right. Uh, please share. It's the only way that we, we can really spread this across the airwaves. So thank you so much for just being a part of this. Again, if you don't show up, it's just me talking in a studio all by myself. So I really appreciate you taking the time and we are going to grow together. Remember that we're going places and that information changes situations. So I want you to stay up. I want you to stay happy. I want you to create the life that you know you should be living. And that happens one day at a time, right? You don't need to impress anybody else. You don't need to do this for anybody else. If this is just something that calls you, then I admonish you. I ask you to just keep pushing, stay the course, and just put the most important things in your life first. Logic Pro. And of course, Eddie Gray. All right, we're going to get out of here. Uh, m many blessings. I'll see you tomorrow. Let's go.